system on how we run our foreign policy. So I would say there's a lot of room to cut on the military, but not on the defense. You can slash the military spending. We don't need to be building airplanes that were used in World War II. We're always fighting the last war. But we're under great threat because we occupy so many countries. We're in 130 countries. We have 900 bases around the world. We're going broke. The purpose of Al-Qaeda was to attack us, invite us over there where they can target us. And they have been doing it. They have more attacks against us and the American interest per month than occurred in all the years before 9-11. But we're there occupying their land. And if we think that we can do that and not have retaliation, we're kidding ourselves. We have to be honest with ourselves. What would we do if another country, say China, did to us what we do to all those countries over there? So I would say a policy, a national, a foreign policy that takes care of our national defense, that it, we're willing to get along with people and trade with people as the founders advised. There's no authority in the Constitution to be the policeman of the world and no nation building. Just remember, George Bush won the presidency on that platform in the year 2000. And I still think it's a good platform. All right, let me let Senator Santorum respond because I know you strongly disagree. On your, on your website on 9-11, you had a blog post that, said, that basically blamed the United States for 9-11. On your website yesterday, you said that it was our actions that brought about the actions of 9-11. Now, Congressman Paul, that is irresponsible. A president of the United States running for, uh, someone who's running for the president of the United States and the Republican Party should not be parroting what Osama bin Laden said on 9-11. We should have, we, we, are, we, are not being, we are not being attacked, and we were not attacked because of our actions. We were attacked, as Newt talked about, because we have, a, we have a, a civilization that is antithetical to the civilization of the jihadist. And they want to kill us because of who we are and what we stand for. And we stand for American exceptionalism. We stand for freedom and opportunity for everybody around the world. And I am not ashamed to do that. 30 seconds, uh, Mr. Paul. As long as this country follows that idea, we're going to be under a lot of, a lot of danger. This whole idea that the whole Muslim world is responsible for this and they're attacking us because we're free and prosperous, that is just not true. Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda have been explicit. They have been explicit and they wrote and said that we attacked we attacked America because you had bases on our holy land in Saudi Arabia. You do not give Palestinians a fair treatment and you have been bombing I didn't say that. I'm, I'm trying to get you to understand what the motive was behind the bombing. At the same time, we had been bombing and killing hundreds of thousands of Iraqis for 10 years. Would you be annoyed? If you're not annoyed, you, then there's some problem. All right, we're going to stay on this subject. We have a question from the audience. Go ahead. Please, please identify yourself. Hi, my name is Sahar. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas rise? Without objection, so ordered. Madam Speaker, uh, the bombing in Serbia must stop immediately. Serbia has never aggressed against the United States. Serbia is involved in a bloody civil war of which we should have no part and have not declared war as the Constitution requires. And that makes this war both immoral and illegal. Not only has the bombing done no good, it has made the situation much worse and the world more dangerous. Serb troops are not dying, American troops are not dying, but innocent civilians are being killed by the hundreds on both sides. There are just too many uncanny accidents. The refugee problem, which was minimal before the bombing, is now catastrophic as a result. Congress should not fund this war, and if we do, we have become an accomplice and morally responsible for the killing, for the spread of this conflict that will surely occur if this bombing is not stopped. The gentleman is recognized for five Madam minutes. Speaker, the U.S. NATO war against Serbia is illegal by all standards. Congress has not declared war, therefore the president has no authority to wage war. Attacking a sovereign nation violates long-standing international law as well as the NATO and UN charters. NATO's aggression is immoral as well. It forces U.S. citizens and others in Europe 
opposed to the war to pay for it, and some are even forced to fight in it against their will. If the war expands, we can expect the return of the draft to make sure there are enough soldiers to participate. As ugly as the Yugoslavian civil war may be in Kosovo, and as heart-wrenching as the pictures of mass refugees fleeing their homeland is, one evil can never justify another. If one is disinclined to be persuaded by law and morality and responds only to emotions, propaganda, and half-truth, then one must consider the practical failure of compulsive intervention in the affairs of other nations. Prior to NATO's expanding the war in Yugoslavia, approximately 2,000 deaths in the past year were recorded in Kosovo. As a consequence of NATO's actions, the killing has now escalated and no one can hardly be pleased just because now Serbs, our once valiant allies against the Nazis, are dying. Those who are motivated by good intentions while ignoring facts cannot be excused for the escalating and the dangerous crisis in Yugoslavia. The humanitarian concerns for Albanian refugees is justified, but going to war because of emotional concerns while ignoring other millions of refugees around the world only stirs the passions of the oppressed, whether they are Kurds, Palestinians, Tibetans, East Timorans, or Rwandans. When NATO talks of returning Albania to their homes in Kosovo, I wonder why there's no reference or concern for the more than 500,000 Serbs thrown out of their homes in Bosnia, Slovenia, and Croatia. Current NATO policy in Yugoslavia will surely encourage more ethnic minorities around the world to revolt and demand independence. Some in Congress are now saying that although they were strongly opposed to the administration's policy of bombing in Yugoslavia prior to its onset, conditions are now different and an all-out effort to win with ground troops if necessary must be undertaken. This is said, it is said, is required to preserve NATO's credibility. Who cares about NATO's credibility? Are American lives to be lost in a greater war precipitated to pressure NATO to preserve NATO's credibility? Should the rule of law and morality be thrown out in an effort to preserve NATO's credibility? Can something be wrong and misguided before it started and all of a sudden deserve to be blindly supported? This reasoning makes no sense. No one has quite figured out the secret motivation of why this war must be fought. But I found it interesting that evidence of our weapon shortage is broadcast to the world and to the Serbs. Surely, one result of the war will be a rapid rush by Congress this year to massively increase the military budget. But a serious discussion of our flawed foreign policy of intervention that has served us so poorly, unfortunately, will not occur. Political leaders and pundits are struggling to define an exit strategy for the war. In the old days, when wars were properly declared for national security reasons, no one needed to ask such a question. A moral war fought against an aggressor for national security reasons was over when it was won. It's only been since Congress has reneged on its responsibility with regards to war power has it become necessary to discuss how we exit a war not legitimately entered into and without victory as the goal. The political wars fought without declaration, starting with the Korean War to the present, have not enhanced the long-term security and liberty of the American people. Institutionalizing a collective approach to war seems a result of the obsession to save face for NATO. Never before in our history have we Americans accepted so casually the turning over of a military operation to foreign control with non-American spokesmen briefing us each day. The world approach to... Uh, this is a major step in further solidifying the world government approach to all political problems. There is, however, one major contradiction to the internationalist desire, desire to assimilate all countries and ethnic groups and have them governed by a single world government. Quite ironically, ethnic diversity will surely be the casualty of all this mischief. NATO and the U.S. are co-conspirator and military allies of a Serbian province that is seeking to become a separate ethnic country. Let there be no doubt, if NATO has its way, Albanian Kosovars will not remain part of Serbia. 
gentleman from Texas, Mr. Paul. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent to revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, so ordered. Mr. Speaker, U.S. military forces are now bombing a foreign nation halfway around the world. This cannot be a proud moment for America. The reason given for doing so is that Serbian leaders have not done what we have told them to do. Serbia has not invaded another country, but is involved in a nasty civil war with both sides contributing to the violence. There is no American, American security interest involved in Serbia. Serbia has not threatened us nor used any force against any American citizen. As bad as the violence is toward the ethnic Albanians in Kosovo, our ability to police and stop all ethnic fighting around the world is quite limited and the efforts are not permitted under constitutional law. We do not even pretend to solve the problems of South Sahara, Africa, Tibet, East Timor, Kurdistan, and many other places around the world where endless tragic circumstances prevail. Our responsibility as U.S. members of Congress is to preserve liberty here at home and uphold the rule of law. Meddling in the internal and dangerous affairs of a nation involved in civil war is illegal and dangerous. Congress has not given the President authority to wage war. The House resolution regarding Kosovo was narrowly, reluctantly, and conditionally passed. It was a non-binding resolution and had no effect of law. Even if it did, the resolution dealt with sending troops as a peacekeeping force to Kosovo only if a peace agreement was signed. There was no mention of endorsing an act of war against Serbia. Besides, the resolution was not the proper procedure for granting war power to a president. The Senate resolution, now claimed to be congressional consent for the president to wage war, is not much better. It too was a sense of Congress resolution without the force of law. It implies the president can defer to NATO for authority to pursue a war effort. Only Congress can decide the issue of war. Congress cannot transfer the constitutional war power to the president or to NATO or to the United Nations. The Senate resolution, however, specifically limits the use of force to air operations and missile strikes. But no war has ever been won with air power alone. The, Lamos the Milosevic problem will actually get worse with our attacks and ground troops will likely follow. It has been argued we are needed to stop the spread of war throughout the Balkans. Our presence will do the opposite, but it will certainly help the military industrial complex. Peaceful and cooperative relations with Russia, a desired goal, has now ended, and we have provided the Russians, provoked the Russians into now becoming a much more active ally of Serbia. U.S. and NATO policy against Serbia will certainly encourage the Kurds. Every argument for Kosovo's independence can be used by the Kurds for their long sought after independence. This surely will drive the Turks away from NATO. Our determination to be involved in the dangerous civil war may well prompt a stronger Greek alliance with their friends in Serbia, further splitting NATO and offending the Turks who are naturally inclined to be sympathetic to the Albanian Muslims. No good can come of our involvement in this Serbian civil war, no matter how glowing and humanitarian the terms used by our leaders. Sympathy and compassion for the suffering and voluntary support support for the oppressed is commendable. The use of force and acts of war to pick and choose between two sides fighting for hundreds of years cannot achieve peace. It can only spread the misery and suffering, weaken our defenses, and undermine our national sovereignty. Only when those who champion our war effort in Serbia are willing to volunteer for the front lines and offer their own lives for the cause will they gain credibility. Promoters of war never personalize it. It's always some other person or some other parent's child, child's life whose will be sacrificed, not their own. With new talk of reinstituting the military draft, since many disillusioned military personnel are disgusted with the morale of our armed forces, 
All Americans should pay close attention as our leaders foolishly and carelessly risk our troops, rush our troops into a no-win war of which we should have no part. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen's time has expired.